Yo, would you believe me if I told you that I don't own a pair of shoes from England? I had to double check my shoe list just to make sure because sometimes I'll be forgetting what I have. But yeah, it's official, man. I don't own any shoes from England. But we're going to change that. Intro. You should come rolling my shit. Yo, what up? My name is Vladimir Richet from ChaseAndBrother.com. In this video, we're going to unbox my first pair of shoes from England. As the box indicates, this pair of shoes is from Paul Sargent. For those of you that don't know, the name Sargent is synonymous with English shoemaking. So Alfred Sargent started the company back in 1899 with his two sons, Frank and Harry. In the 1940s, Frank's sons Derek joined the company. Derek is Paul's father and eventually in the 60s Paul Sargent himself came on board. Unfortunately in 2019 our first Sargent went into liquidation and that's how Paul Sargent was born. So they're still making shoes in the same exact factory that they started back in 1899 and they also still have the same styles that Alfred Sargent used to carry. Now before we get to this unboxing just want to tell you a quick story. Back when I first started getting into wealthy shoes it was a pair of Alfred Sargent shoes that really, really caught my eye. About 12 or 13 years ago, I was on YouTube looking for videos on how to mirror shine your shoes. And one of the really good videos on there at that time was a guy shining a pair of light brown shoes. And I instantly fell in love with the shoes, but I didn't know what they were. I remember going through the comments to see if somebody would mention the brand of the shoes. Nobody did. Back then, I didn't really know that much about shoes anyway. And eventually the guy who made the video commented that they were a pair of Alfred Sargent shoes. It was a pair of Adelaide with a pick heel counter and I'd never seen anything like that before. Eventually I discovered Gaziano and Girling and I saw that they also had the same exact style. But the first pick heel counter Adelaide that I fell in love with was a pair of Alfred Sargent. My first pick heel counter Adelaide was from Enzo Bonafe, but I never forgot about those shoes that I saw on YouTube. So fast forward 13 years, I was finally able to make that happen. And um, let's get to the unboxing. So as you can see, the shoes come in a blue box and it says Paul Sargent in orange and also says made in England. So the style of the shoes is the Moore, which is their pick here, Adelaide. The description says it's a green hash grain and my size is a seven. Now let's get to the shoes. So the shoes come with two of those cloths that you can wrap the shoes in. Let's take a look at the shoes, man. Now, if you know anything about me, especially if you've been watching any of my videos lately, I really have a thing for grained Oxfords. And this pair is a combination of grain and green aniline. Aniline leather is a leather that's been dyed to look a different color. Obviously, leather is calf skin and there's no cow walking around with green skin. So this is why it's called aniline because it's been dyed to be that color. So whenever you see green, whenever you see blue, chances are that's the process that they use to dye the leather. Although some companies will also paint the leather in house. So that does happen as well. But in this case, this is aniline leather. Funny story about this pair, originally it was supposed to be all aniline. The shoes were made and everything. They actually posted it on the Instagram. But when I reached out to ask them when I would be getting the shoes, they actually told me they weren't too happy with the final product, so they would be remaking the shoes. So while I was waiting for the shoes to be done, I saw on this Facebook group, somebody posted a pair of more in green grain leather. And at that time, I started kicking myself in the ass because I didn't think that they offered that. I was like, man, I wish I knew that they had a green grain leather so I can kill two birds with one stone. I can get my grain shoes and I can get my green shoes all at once, you know what I mean? But since those shoes were already being made, I didn't want to be the guy to reach out to them and tell them, can they make it in grain leather instead? I'm like, it's all good. Then I was scrolling on Instagram and I saw that they posted these shoes. Then a day later, I get an email from them saying that my shoes are done and they're on their way. I still wasn't really putting two and two together. Then I got another email saying that they really made me a special shoe. It's part aniline leather and part grain leather and even the sole is green. 
And I couldn't be happier because I really wasn't expecting that, you know what I mean? So I got those shoes in the mail a day later. And the first thing that I noticed when I opened the box was the shoes weren't really as green as I was expecting or as green as they looked in the picture. Now, part of the reason is because when I received the shoes, it was kind of late. I wasn't able to go outside to really look at it in the sun. But even then, the shoes weren't as green as you would expect when you're talking about green shoes. And to me, that's a great thing because like I was saying, I did want a pair of green shoes, but I didn't want them to look too green. So this is like the best of both worlds where indoors it's like a blackish green or greenish black i don't even really know what to call it but all i know is when i received them i asked everybody at my house what color are those shoes and nobody said green so i don't know exactly how they're coming across right now because i haven't edited the video but they definitely don't look like you would expect when talking about green shoes now in the sun they do look more green but even then it's not an in your face green it's still very subtle it's kind of hard to explain it's probably one of those things that you would have to see it in person to see what i'm talking about i look at it inside i look at it outside it still doesn't look as green as it look in the picture but yeah they're definitely green <laughs> just to show you what i'm talking about for example i got this watch strap to go along with the shoes and as you can see the watch strap to me looks green, but you can see that the shoes are definitely much darker than the strap. This strap is not even a bright green, it's like a dark green, and it's still much lighter than the shoes. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. And to be transparent as always, the shoes were sent to me for free, but everything that you're hearing now were just my thoughts. And also, Paul Sargent won't get an advanced copy of the video. They'll be watching it at the same time as you guys. The funny thing is, as I mentioned in my last video, where I unboxed a pair of shoes from Crew Nun Perel, if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it somewhere up here. I'll also include it in the description. All my shoes, I've been brown, black, and burgundy. I've never ventured outside of those colors. So the Crew is a great museum, so that was the first pair of shoes that I had that was a different color than the ones that I mentioned. So when Paul Sargent reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to try one of their shoes, I had a hard time coming up with what color I wanted to try. The thing about me, I don't like any part of my wardrobe to really bring too much attention to itself. So even though deep down inside, I wanted to try a pair of green shoes, I was really skeptical about it because I didn't want it to stand out too much. But if you're not into green shoes, there are a ton of different leathers to choose from, from black to cherry to dark brown to suede to navy. But I'm very glad I made that decision I have a ton of shoes, so I can easily step out the box a little bit. But if someone is just starting out, I wouldn't recommend green shoes to start. But I'm at a stage in my collection where I can definitely venture out. Paul Sargent has three lines of shoes to choose from. They have the exclusive line, which is what these are. Anything from a Chelsea to a single monk strap, double monk strap, loafers. There are a ton of different options under the exclusive line. Then they have their country line, which is more of their casual line. There are a ton of boots to choose from in that line. And they also have a long wing and a couple other options. I believe there are nine styles to choose from. And they also have the hand grade line, which is their top of the line offering. And the biggest difference between the exclusive line and the hand grade line is in the leather. So when you're talking about the exclusive line, they're able to get multiple pair of shoes per skin versus with the hand grade line, it's only one pair of shoes per skin so they're a lot more selective when it comes to the hand grid line and also on the hand grid line the sole is by color you can also choose to get metal toe tips and it also comes with a fiddle back waist and as you can see with the exclusive line it's a flat waist and it's a single color so one thing about the website it doesn't really specify the type of leathers that they have i'm sure that will be on the website eventually but now you can only select the style and you can select the size they have range anywhere from a 5 uk to a 13 uk and they also have two different widths the e width which is their standard width and they also have an f width that's a little bit larger but as you can see they can do many different things you just have to let them know exactly what you want now, one thing that I failed to mention is that I needed metal toe tips on mine. I walk like this, right? Like the front goes down first. So the first part to get damaged is the tip. So I always have metal toe tips and that always extends the life of my shoes. So the first thing I'm going to do prior to wearing these shoes is put metal toe tips on them. Now, another thing that I'm going to change, if you guys know me, you already know what it is, are the laces. 
So these came with round laces. I'm not a fan of round laces. I already have the laces, but I didn't want to put them on yet because I wanted you to see exactly how the shoes come. And I'm sure that they'll look even better once I put the flat laces on them. Now this pair is really incredible. It does not disappoint after I first saw them on YouTube some 12 or 13 years ago. Now you're probably wondering how much are the shoes. The shoes retail for $630 and cost $65 to ship to the US. Now the way that I plan to wear these is pretty much the same way that I would wear dark brown shoes. The only difference is I do have a dark green suit that I typically wear with dark brown shoes. So I would not wear this pair with that suit. But besides that, I think these shoes can go with anything. The fact that they're not too bright definitely makes them more versatile. And I'm really looking forward to wearing them, man. These are really, really beautiful. Now, as far as the construction, all their shoes are good year welted. So it doesn't matter if it's the exclusive line, the country line, or the hand grade line. Now, they source their leathers from a local supplier. But I'm pretty sure that these leathers are from all over the world. It comes with a closed channel sole, meaning that you cannot see the stitching. And the way that this is done is they open a channel so that they can stitch through it. And then they close the channel, that way they hide the stitching. And you can see that the waist is pretty slim, which is a really nice look. Now, one thing with Paul Sargent, at least for now, they do not carry an inventory. So you do have to place an order and wait eight to 10 weeks for the shoes to be finished. Eventually, they will have shoes that are ready to ship, but for now, it's more of an MTO situation where you select the style that you like and then you can customize it. You can change the leather, you can change the sole, and you can ask for metal toe tips at an upcharge. The last is the 724F last, which is the only last that the more is made on. They do have multiple lasts for different type of shoes, but if you want a pair of more, it only comes in this last. As you can see, the 724F is a square last, but it's very well balanced. So it's not too chiseled. To me, it's more like a soft square, but you can see that it does have some sharp lines. So I'm really looking forward to hearing your comments about this pair. What do you think about green shoes? Is that something that you'll be trying? Let me know, man. And I can't wait to start styling them because I think a lot of guys will probably be on the fence. But once they see somebody wearing them, then they probably would feel different about it. But I think that these would look really, really nice with gray. But don't sleep on brown. I can definitely see these looking killer with a brown suit. Like imagine a brown Prince or well suit. I think that those would look really, really nice with that. Now, a couple of things that I would change. Number one, I would ship out the shoes in flat laces as opposed to round laces or I would include a pair of flat laces in the box just to have more options. But that's an easy fix. Once again, I already have spare flat laces around, so I will be changing those soon. But the second thing, which is more important, is currently Paul Sargent does not have lasted shoe trees. I remember back in the Alfred Sargent days, they used to have really nice lasted shoe trees that were complimentary. So I'm not asking for them to be free going forward, but I think that they should make it a priority to bring back the lasted shoe trees. Now wrist check, I'm wearing my 1976 Seiko King Quartz and I have it on a Chase and Rider strap that's dark burgundy. If you're not aware, I do sell my own straps. I'll link to the link in the description. And also be on the lookout for my podcast premiering on August 1st. I just released the trailer a couple days ago, so I will include that in the description as well. So that was the unboxing of my Paul Sargent Pick Heel Counter Adelaide called the Moor. Number one, they're my first pair of shoes from England, as I was saying. And number two, I've really stepped out all the way out of my comfort zone, as this is my first pair of green shoes. So as I mentioned before, an Adelaide with a pig heel counter is my favorite style of shoes. This is my fourth pair in this configuration. Now these shoes are extremely special. It's like lately my shoe game has just gone to another stratosphere, man. So hit the thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe. Everybody gonna think that you a hater and I'll catch you in the next video.